Craig asks, he says, um, uh, one of my retirement passions, he says, is collecting older Apple gear. And he's already got like a G3 iMac and a Cube and a Sunflower and the Quicksilver power. So cool. I'm concerned about how best to integrate this stuff into my household Wi-Fi network. The question is, will my these old devices slow down my network? Because there was a time when that was true, that a, a device that was, say, 802.11b or 802.11g would slow down the other devices on your wireless network. Those days are mostly now over. And let me explain. The basis for that whole, you know, B, G, even N devices will slow down your network was based on the concept of airtime fairness or lack thereof. Wi-Fi only allowed, and I say allowed, but with these devices, it's still true. With, with current standards, if everything's on like, you know, Wi-Fi 6, then multiple devices can talk. But when you've got a B, G, or an N device, um, Wi-Fi only allows one client to talk with the router at any given time or with the access point at any given time. And the access point plays traffic cop in that scenario, right? The, the way it works it, it, by default, it, the way Wi-Fi works by default is that it allows each client to send a specific amount of data before moving on to the next client. So it says, okay, you can send, you know, a hundred K of data and then I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go listen to the next thing and, and, you know, go round Robin or however it's deciding to go around. That all seems fine and good, except when you have a scenario where you've got say an 802.11 B device and an 802.11 AC device, both connected to the same access point because it takes the 802.11 B device way longer to send hundred K than it does the 802.11 AC. And that would therefore cause in many scenarios it to quote unquote, slow down the other devices. It wasn't that it was slowing down your, your devices. It was just that it wasn't letting them talk as much because everybody was limited to a certain amount of data, but that only would happen if your devices are transmitting or receiving lots of data. If they're just sort of existing on the network, not so much of a problem. So with like IOT devices, not really a concern. But with computers that are going to be web browsing and downloading software updates and all that stuff, that could cause problems. And that's why this concept that I mentioned called airtime fairness came into being about a decade ago. Um, and it, he had meant Craig mentioned that he has an Orbi. I believe Orbi supports this. Uh, I don't know if it's on by default in the Orbi, but you can certainly turn on airtime fairness. It's, it's one of the options in the Wi-Fi settings for lots of current routers. What airtime fairness does is it change the trap. It changes the traffic cops rules, AKA the algorithm from a data based scenario to a time based scenario. So instead of saying you get to send a hundred K it's you get to talk for 200 milliseconds. And then I'm shutting you down regardless of how much data you were able to send. Then it goes to the next person that says, okay, the clock starts now. Send as much or receive as much as you want. And so by enabling airtime fairness, life should be fairly manageable, even with those older devices on your network. I, I would advise, and I, this is what I do on my networks where I have control of it. A lot of things just do this automatically now. Most mesh systems are using airtime fairness. Um, but m my advice is to enable airtime fairness uh, unless you have some very specific reason not to, because it, it just makes the network work better. And I, I think it is the default for a lot of things. So hopefully that helps, Craig. Right.